What the Black Brothers that talked earlier were trying to tell you is that there's a need for revolution and that fascism is a reality here in this country and that you don't have freedom of speech and you don't have freedom of the press. But what the pigs are proving to you is that that's true. In other words, they were just talking about it before. It's obvious that it's true now because they're coming onto your campus, a public campus, and telling you, you the public can't hear public speakers. But I'm sure that I haven't seen this type of demonstration last year when the Viet Cong destroyed a village, killed women and children. Perhaps the best way of all to analyze what's happening here at North Texas State is to remember the way it used to be covering meetings like this as a newsman. At first, the meeting was the important thing. Then, as the time went by, the months and the meetings and the rallies, it came to pass that most of the students joked with us wanting their pictures taken. Today, here in Denton, we find the students don't want us here, which just might indicate they'd as soon not have the rally going on on their campus. Jerry Taft, Channel 8 News on the Move at North Texas State. The dissident college students one hears from so often these days are usually advocating radical change in the system. They want to part with hidebound tradition to get away from what they call establishment values. For years, it's been traditional for graduating UTA students to march across the stage at commencement and receive their diplomas individually. But this year, a faculty committee headed by history professor C.D. Richards decided that only master's and Ph.D. graduates, in addition to honor students, should be individually recognized. The rest would stand as a group to be conferred with degrees. And so, instead of having two graduations a year, now we only have one, and we have so many graduates, it became practically mechanically impossible. The student newspaper at UTA, The Shorthorn, and its editor, Don Sloan, advocate retaining the ceremony as it is. Their decision to only let uh, honor graduates and graduate students walk across the stage at commencement is uh, highly unfair to most of the people graduating. I feel that graduation is an honor in itself and that they shouldn't set these people up on a pedestal like that. I don't feel that, uh, while, while they deserve it, I don't feel they deserve it any more than some of the people who, who will be sitting in the audience who perhaps have worked uh, as hard or even harder than uh, some of those graduating with honors. One alternative that's been proposed is to hold separate commencements for each school in the university prior to the large final gathering here in Texas Hall. That would allow the shortening of the prime ceremony as well as the recognition of the individual student. A meeting was held today to discuss that alternative. We'll know the results soon. Jay Lewis, Channel 8 News on the Move at the University of Texas at Arlington. It has been recently, it has recently been revealed by the American press that dead U.S. soldiers have been found in Laos wearing South Vietnamese uniforms. According to U.S. figures, the bombings of Laos is the most extensive bombing in the history of warfare. And since 1969, 30,000 people. I like, uh, Governor Preston Smith's second tax and budget proposal to a joint session of the legislature included several major tax increases. However, he began his speech expressing disappointment that the legislature had not accepted his no-tax proposals originally made right after inauguration. First, I recommend that the rate of the general sales tax be raised to 4%, effective July the 1st, 1971. This will raise an anticipated $300 million. It is my belief, and I think that you will agree, that increasing the rate of the sales tax 
is a much more acceptable solution than removing exemptions. My second recommendation is that the tax rate on the sale of motor vehicles be increased from 3% to 4%. This will raise an additional $70 million during the biennium. My third and final recommendation is that tuition for non-resident students in our state-supported colleges and universities be raised from $200 to $500 per semester, and that the tuition for Texas resident students be increased from $50 per semester to $125 per semester. Governor Smith said that, in fact, his total tax recommendations would raise $50 million more than his budget would require. This, he said, is needed because it's time to start building up a little reserve. That's considerably changed from his original plan, which would have required deficit financing in future budgets. Also, Governor Smith made it plain that he will not accept a one-year budget. He repeated that he vetoed a one-year budget in 1969 with a definite indication that he would do so again if one is passed by the legislature this time. Reaction to Governor Smith's budget proposals and tax measures was generally mixed throughout the legislature. He only recommended uh, a 10-month welfare spending proposal. This is going to necessitate a special session. If we're going to write welfare spending for 10 months, we should go ahead and write it for 12 months. As I have said, uh, in regard to all other state spending, uh, a, a one-year bill would be more realistic. Uh, I appreciate Governor Smith coming back to the legislature and recommending another tax bill after his first tax proposal was defeated by the largest majority any tax proposal has ever been defeated by. Uh, I feel it's much more practical than the plan he presented before. I think it's more realistic. I think it's keeping us when the, within the pay as you go. Uh, I feel like it has a, a chance, maybe with some amendments, of passing the House. I don't uh, tend to predict the Senate, but I've heard that they're not going to pass anything over there without a corporate income tax. I think it's totally unrealistic. Totally. You don't like any part of it? No part of it, whatever. It's 100% on consumer and no tax on business, whatever. It's a repudiation of the Democratic platform of 1970 that promised a balanced tax program. And to me, it represents one step backward for Preston Smith and one giant leap backward for mankind. After the second major proposal by Governor Smith, it's now back to the drawing boards for the Texas legislature. And again, it looks just as it did in the beginning of this session. It's going to be a long, hard struggle before anything is ever finally concluded here in Austin as far as the budget is concerned. In fact, there may be, again, several special sessions of the legislature. This is Roger McDonald, Channel 8 News on the Move in Austin. I think we're behaving quite responsibly in the matter. It takes a lot of time to make a decision like this. They have to consider many factors. What about his condition when he arrived at the hospital that evening following the wreck? He had severe lacerations of the forehead and uh, suffered a head injury, or what we call a concussion. was uh, quite or not oriented at the time and place. He had lost considerable incredible amount of blood. Was he drunk or had he been drinking? No, sir. He was not drunk. He had not been drinking. It is medically impossible for a man to be intoxicated and not smell alcohol in his breath. I worked over his face very closely for approximately an hour and a half. There was absolutely no odor of alcohol whatsoever. There was nothing in his behavior to indicate intoxication. There were seven other employees here at the hospital who worked with him 
they testified also that they found no indication of alcoholism. But wouldn't you be able to influence their statements, being the boss? I'm not that stupid. Jerry, I don't feel comfortable at all. <laughs> of course, you're being chased by quite a few good teams, aren't you? Well, we are. There are three teams right behind us, only one game behind, and there's still five games left in conference play. And so all we can do is just look forward to the next game, and that game happens to be Rice here at 2.30 Saturday, and uh, we've got to get ready for them, and we must beat them. The good thing about your schedule is that you don't have but a couple of games on the road, and the teams that are chasing you have to play each other, so they could very well knock themselves out of the picture. Do you look at it that way? Well, I, Jerry, I guess I've looked at it every way that it could be looked at. Uh, yeah, we have three out of our last five games at home, and I feel like this is an advantage. Uh, some of them don't have that good a schedule. Still, it all boils down to we have to continue to win, and we've got to hope they knock each other off. But um, the big ones here Saturday, Rice University. Rice beat you down in Houston. Will that add some impetus to your trying to win this one? Well, I think it's, it's there whether I dwelled on it or not. They broke our six-game winning streak, and they beat us pretty bad in Houston. And uh, my kids remember that, and naturally this is going to be extra incentives when uh, we throw the ball up Saturday. Do you have any members, I know you're awfully proud of Goo and Simpson, any members on your squad that have surprised you and played uh, a better ball than you thought they might be capable of playing? Well, Jerry, you know, that's real hard to say because every one of these kids, the five starters I have out there this year, they had never played together before in their life. Three of them are junior college kids, and to be honest, I did not know how good they were. Uh, one of the kids is a kid that started with me last year, Ricky Hall, and Ricky's always done more than you think he can do. He's just one of those kids like Eddie Stanky was in baseball. Um, and then James Williams is a sophomore from Dallas South Oak Cliff. And we call him Snake over here. And Snake has made tremendous strides. And right now I consider him a, a real good guard.